Hi, I'm Professor Silver, and in today's class, we'll explore the history of Serena's Del Fox, detailing her journey from a fussy Fennekin into a dancing queen worthy of the master class. This video is brought to you by Magic Spoon. In a battle of aerial mobility, Fennekin debuted as one of the three starters that Professor Sycamore offered to new Colosian trainers. Serena chose her as her own in a shockingly cheeky friendship. The two of them quickly bonded, likely because Fennekin saved Serena from Vespa Queen. Their friendship also flourished because they shared near-identical personalities. Fennekin saw Serena as a kindred soul, so she often copied her gestures. Examples of the mimicry can be found in a blustery Santaloon gym battle and giving chase at the Rhyhorn race. In the latter, Fennekin also proved herself as a budding battler by trouncing Team Rocket. Although she was too inexperienced to beat Clement's Magneton and Clement's Got a Secret, what truly stopped her from being a powerhouse was her fear of getting dirty. Like Serena, she grew agitated and embarrassed whenever she couldn't be clean, prim, and proper. After Fennekin's fear took center stage in the bamboozling forest, Serena revealed in Kindergarten Chaos that she brushed the Pokémon daily in order to alleviate her worries. Looking her best was of the utmost importance to Fennekin, likely because she had dreams of stardom. In a Pokévision of things to come, she starred in Serena's Pokévision film so as to prove her star-like status and showed that she was every bit as cute as Arya's Fennekin. Whilst filming, she rocked a little hat, matched outfits with Serena, and developed an affection for cooking. When Team Rocket stole her, the fear of getting dirty hindered her escape. It wasn't until Serena dirtied herself in order to save Fennekin that the Fox Pokémon finally understood how much her obsession with cleanliness was holding her back. As soon as Pumpkaboo put Serena in danger, Fennekin put aside her fear and triumphed a flamethrower. As a reward, I imagine Serena gave Fennekin a bowl of our sponsor, Magic Spoon. As you can probably tell from my obsession with Pokémon, I'm all about collecting. Lately, I've been hunting for the perfect cereal. I've captured many promising brands, but I've released them all from my morning routine as they were entirely too sugary. It wasn't until I found Magic Spoon that I finally caught a glimpse of the perfect cereal for me. At only 140 calories per serving, the cereals have 0 grams of sugar, 13 grams of protein, and only 4 to 5 net grams of carbs. Magic Spoon comes in a variety of flavors, with each having their own unique taste. Amazingly, they're also keto-friendly, gluten-free, grain-free, and soy-free. A few of the many flavors that I enjoy are s'more, honey nut, blueberry muffin, and maple waffle. My absolute favorite is chocolate chip cookie. Beyond breakfast, I also love to eat Magic Spoon as a snack while doing my research, as it makes me super nostalgic for all the afternoons after school that I spent watching cartoons. If you're ready to try Magic Spoon for yourself, Use my code PROFESSORSILVER for $5 off your personalized variety box. I also highly suggest that you add some cereal bars to your box, as the cookies and cream and cocoa peanut butter flavors are incredibly tasty. Magic Spoon is so confident in their product that if you don't like your cereal, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. And now back to Fennekin's history. Despite overcoming her aversion to dirt, Fennekin's lack of experience led her to struggle in many of her early battles. She fled from a Corsola and going for the gold, failed to beat Meowth in coming back for the cold, and nearly fell to Team Rocket in to find a fairy flower. Serena never once faulted Fennekin for her shortcomings, however, as she thought her the perfect companion. In a battle by any other name, Fennekin returned Serena's loyalty by dispersing Swirlix, making Pokepuffs, and battling the trio. As more examples of the Pokémon's growing power, she also defeated Team Rocket in Battles in the Sky and fought Shauna in Summer of Discovery. Though she fell to the girls' Bulbasaur, she earned redemption by providing help throughout the rest of Serena's summer camp adventures. During Day 3 blockbusters, foggy Pokémon orienteering, and battling into the Hall of Fame, Fennekin worked diligently to help Serena complete the camp's various challenges, get a better sense of her goals, and fight in battles. Fennekin won her first triple battle thanks to the help of her teammates, but fainted during the second one as Tierno Squirtle hit her with Water Gun and Aqua Tail. The latter's outcome was quite depressing, but she quickly rebounded upon resolving to do better the next time around. In the episode Dreaming a Performer's Dream, Fennekin and Serena finally found their calling. They resolved themselves to become master performers as they loved watching Arya dazzle a crowd. A wild Pancham shared their dreams of stardom, so they added him to their team soon after Fennekin heard him in battle. Following training sessions in Pathways to Performance Partnering and a Race for Home, Serena rewarded Fennekin for all her hard work by giving her ribbons in Under the Pledging Tree. Fennekin loved the ribbons with all her heart, 
but they ultimately proved her undoing at the Kumarine Showcase in Showcase debut. Even though they made her into the anime's most adorable Pokemon, their length caused her to trip while walking the runway. The unfortunate accident led Serena to lose the contest, but the trainer only blamed herself. Thankfully for Fennekin and viewers alike, Serena rebounded from the loss with renewed conviction and a stylish new hairdo. As a result, Fennekin departed the contest with her head held high. Not letting the setback keep her down, she bravely battled a poacher in a fork in the road, a parting of ways. To further prep for her next showcase, she trained during the episode battling with elegance and a big smile. Sadly, the training session ended in calamity as Fennekin feuded with Pancham and burned Serena. It initially displeased Serena to look so disheveled, but Arya helped her realize that neither Pokemon meant any harm. After exchanging apologies with her two Pokemon, Serena used them in a double battle against Arya, as Arya wanted to help them all improve their confidence. During the battle, Arya's Aromatisse reflected Fennekin's scratch, while her Delphox charred Pancham. Because Reflect also blocked Stone Edge, Pancham used the attack to launch Fennekin upward. The fiery fox failed to break through the reflective barrier, but she held strong as Pancham saved her from Charge Beam. Right as Serena remembered to never stop smiling and to always try her best, Fennekin evolved into Brakeson. She did so because she loved Serena with all her heart and desperately wanted to please her. Before the battle resumed, however, Arya got called away by her producer. Despite the premature end of Brakeson's first battle, Serena confirmed to Clement in Confronting the Darkness that the Pokémon's new form provided her many new opportunities to showcase their performance skills. In performing with Fiery Charm, Brakeson validated Serena's words by rocking the Dendamil Showcase. To start things off, she baked delicious cupcakes and defended Serena from Jesse. History nearly repeated itself when Serena tore her skirt, but Brakeson encouraged her to hold strong. Thereafter, Brakeson performed so masterfully with her twirls and flames that Serena won her first princess key. Sadly, Brakeson's happiness at winning didn't last long as she broke her branch while training with Pancham in mending a broken spirit. Its destruction caused her major heartache, as she promised Serena that she'd use it to help her become Kalos Queen. The gang tried to replace the stick so as to improve Brakeson's morale, but it wasn't until Serena met the tree surgeon Woodward that Brakeson finally accepted the loss. Woodward helped her understand that she didn't need the branch to be a star by battling her with his Gallade. Although Brakeson struggled to use Flamethrower and suffered many blows, she revealed her power within when the trio arrived. Rather than let them steal Pikachu, she attacked them with Fire Blast. The new move killed what was left of her branch, but she wasn't without a weapon long as Pancham gave her a new one. She accepted the branch without complaint because Pancham and Serena helped her realize that her family was all she needed to achieve true greatness. To ensure that Brakeson would never again give up on their dream, Serena gifted her a ribbon that would solidify all they had promised to each other. Upon continuing the battle, Brakeson revealed that the experience from the ordeal had skyrocketed her level. Before the fight's end, she dodged Psycho Cut and did major damage with Fire Blast. Having proven her newfound strength, she then planted the old branch and promised to visit it once Serena became Kalos Queen. Thereafter, she attended a fashion show in a fashionable battle, worked on a movie set in Lights Camera Pika, beat up a Gorgeist in a festival trade, a festival farewell, and tended to six Snover in Over the Mountain of Snow. She also proved her helpful nature by volunteering at the Poké Center in Adventures and Running Errands, and by helping catch Evie in the frolicking find in the flowers. Because of all her training as a helper, performer, and fighter, Brakeson completely dominated at the Anastar Showcase in a performance pop quiz. Using the technique she learned from Evie, she masterfully controlled the field with her fancy footwork, leapt atop Stone Edge, and created a fiery finale with Fire Blast. After earning Serena her second princess key, Brakeson fought off an army of ninjas in a festival of decisions. The battle served as great training, but did little to ensure victory at the Kuriwe Showcase in a dancing debut. Brakeson performed admirably as she created a ring of fire and formed many hoops for Eevee, but Eevee's fall gave Jessie the lead she needed to win the showcase. Rather than quit then and there, however, Brakeson and her friends soldiered onward, continued dancing, and kept smiling. Following the showcase, Brakeson trained for her next performance by both providing illumination and meeting at Terminus Cave, and fighting Team Rocket in a cellular connection. When it came time for the floor showcase and masterclass choices, she was more than ready to win. To help get Serena's final princess key, she lit up the stage, combined Flamethrower with Fairy Wind, hopped atop Pancham Stone Edge, and produced a star-studded finale. Due to the key that breaks and helped earn, Serena became eligible for the Masterclass Showcase. During the elite competition in Masterclasses in Session and performing a pathway to the future, Brakeson proved a true MVP. Using Flamethrower and Fire Blast, she absolutely obliterated Miette in the first round. 
opposite Arya's Pokémon in the finals, Brakeson combined Flamethrower with Pancham's attacks, set the stage ablaze, flew into the air, and finished up with a fiery flower. Although Serena ultimately lost the title of Kalos Queen, Brakeson's performance was near flawless. Following Serena's loss to Arya, Brakeson proved herself more than just a dancer by doing battle against an army of Megas in Volcanion and the Mechanical Marvel. She also showed her prowess as a fighter by going to war against Lysander and his evil forces. During the world-threatening conflict, she attacked Roots in a towering takeover, fought Team Flare and the right hero for the right job, and rode Steven's Mega Metagross against the giant rock in rocking Kalos' defenses. For all her efforts, she earned a medal in battling with the clean slate. In the first day of the rest of your life, Brakeson further upped her street cred as one of the greatest heroes Kalos had ever seen by taking part in a free expedition alongside Serena, Shauna, and Jesse. The performers and their Pokémon all danced together because they wanted to bring joy to the many citizens of Lumio City who were negatively impacted by Lysander and the actions of his criminal thugs. The dance was bittersweet as it was Brakeson's last performance before Serena separated from Ash. Because the impending separation depressed Serena, Ash battled Brakeson with Pikachu in an effort to make her feel better. During the battle, Brakeson withstood Quick Attack, tanked Iron Tail, launched Flamethrower, traded blows, and attacked with Fire Blast. Although the battle ended with no winner, it validated how much Serena and Brakeson had grown throughout their adventure with Ash. In the next episode, Till We Compete Again, Serena and Brakeson bid farewell to all their friends as they intended to travel to Hoenn and compete in the region's many contests. It's unknown if Serena won the Grand Festival, but her return and journeys confirm that she's taken the region by storm. Her Collosion Pokémon were all so well-trained that she became something of an idol. The comeback also confirmed that Brakeson had evolved into Delphox. The circumstances weren't explained, but I imagine it happened during an epic contest battle. In the episode itself, Delphox helped Serena win the Lily Cove contest and unveiled her knowledge of mystical fire. It's unknown if Delphox will do anything else of narrative note, so for now, let's get to her battle record. Delphox beat James' Zinke, Jesse's Pumpkaboo, the Steward's Gorgeist, Manetric, Fletchling, and Jesse's Gorgeist. She lost to Shauna's Bulbasaur and Tierno's Squirtle. Move-wise, Delphox used Ember, Fire Blast, Flamethrower, Hidden Power, Mystical Fire, and Scratch. I'd love to see Delphox get more focus in her final form, as she's Serena in Pokémon form. Like her trainer, she's sweet, caring, and just a tad bit fussy. While Sylveon usurped her as Serena's ace in the trainer's latest appearance, it's hard to compete with the starter. Whenever Serena next appears, I hope to see her and Delphox finally prove to the world that they're the greatest pair of performers Kalos has ever seen. And on that, class is adjourned. I want to extend a special thanks to both Magic Spoon and the channel's patrons. If you'd like to watch class early and get other exclusive perks, sign up for Patreon via the link in the description. For other ways to support the channel, like this video, comment your thoughts, subscribe, and hit the bell so you're never late to class. Until next time, catch you later.